we're seeing this wave about one month earlier than last year. Even Olympians can't outrun COVID during this summertime surge. Our body's immune system don't quite recognize it so quickly. What you should know about your next booster and the family of new variants. They're now the children and grandchildren of Omicron. Plus how a Bay Area doctor who guided us through the pandemic got hit with the love bug. To me, moving on to this brave new world uh, was just as scary and uncertain as COVID. So I was living these two different uncertain lives. This is CBS News Bay Area with Elizabeth Cook. And Elizabeth has off today. I'm Ann Makovic. We know that by now a lot of people are pretty sick about hearing about COVID. But we can't ignore the fact that cases are spiking and the virus continues to evolve. Today, a Bay Area doctor is joining us to explain what we should know about this summertime surge, if it's any different or any more serious than before. Well, meantime, a summer spike in COVID cases, getting a lot of attention here in the Bay Area and around the world. American track star Noah Lyles just took home bronze in the 200-meter race at the Olympic Games while fighting COVID. He got medical care after the race, and after that, we learned he had tested positive on Tuesday but had still decided to compete. Look at these... Struggling there, Lyles won gold in the 100 meters on Sunday. Now here in the U.S., California, one of nearly 40 states reporting high COVID activity levels. According to the CDC, levels in our wastewater are at very high levels. Our Kara St. Cyr looks at what's driving the surge and how it's leading people to mask up and take precautions once again. COVID has complicated Brent Portman's life in ways he couldn't have predicted. He's immunocompromised and in remission from Hodgkin's lymphoma. His condition makes it difficult for him and his dog to leave his home without proper PPE. I wear my mask every day, but when I'm here at the airport, I wear my face shield because I know how easily it is to catch COVID at the airport. Portman volunteers at the United Service Organization at the airport, but he can't travel, at least not right now. COVID levels in California's wastewater have reached a very high level for the first time since last winter, with the Bay Area experiencing a significant jump in cases. Wastewater measurements are an even more accurate representation of the positivity rate. Portman's doctor won't clear him to see his family until cases dip back to normal. I know how bad COVID is right now, and my immunologist won't let my, I have family in Florida, and. Illinois and my immunologist won't let me fly to go see him. More transmissible variants of the virus are driving the increase right now. Dr. Peter Chin Hong, an infectious disease expert at UCSF, says KP3, 2, 1, and LB1 account for majority of the cases reported. They're all relatives of JN1, which was circulating in the winter, but they're different enough so that our body's immune system don't quite recognize it so quickly. So that's why people get infected. Dr. Chin Hong says the summertime heat and travel are also perpetuating the spread. The recent heat wave forced more people indoors, and summer traveling means more opportunities to spread the virus nationally. But Dr. Chin Hong says we may see this wave clear up soon. We're seeing this wave about one month earlier than last year, and last year we're still pretty much seeing high levels at the end of August, September, back to school. This year, I'm hopeful that we will see it drop off a month earlier, so maybe the beginning of August. But whether you're flying out for vacation or riding out the summer at home, make sure to take precaution. Mask if you feel sick and keep your distance. Well, the Contra Costa County Health Department is once again recommending wearing masks in crowded indoor spaces because of the surge. An updated COVID vaccine that will target the new strains is expected to be available by this fall. Well, still ahead. Symptoms of COVID lasting years after the test turned negative. We ask a UCSF expert about long COVID. Ask her to break down this latest surge. Should we really be concerned? While COVID cases surge again this summer, some patients who had the virus as far back as two years ago say they've still never fully recovered. Brain fog, shortness of breath, feeling weak. You know the answer to it, but when you get ready to say it, it's like, wait a minute. Eesh. Now there is a national effort to examine the impact 
that long COVID is having on underserved communities. Nine clinics, including Mount Sinai in New York and UCSF here at home, being funded by the federal government for five years as they meet monthly to share their case studies. All right, joining me now, UCSF infectious disease specialist, Dr. Monica Gandhi. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. So we know a lot of people are just really over COVID at this point. I'm hearing, I'm not worried about it. It's just a cold anyway. Who cares if you get it? And for many people, that seems to be true. Yes. So, I mean, essentially what causes mild disease in COVID is immunity. And so the variants also since Omicron came about, which was November 26, 2021, is a little less virulent than the Delta and Alpha before. But it's really our immunity that leads to so many people having mild illness when they get COVID. That's from vaccines and that's from prior natural infection. So it is true. We have a lot of cases, but most of those cases are mild. Okay, so I, I just want to put my own situation out there as an example. You know, I'm thinking about visiting my parents. Should I get on a plane and visit them? They don't have any extreme health problems, but they're elderly, obviously. Am I taking a significant risk? So you're absolutely right that there are three groups that we still worry about um, in terms of being more at risk for COVID. Older people, those who are immunocompromised, and those who have multiple medical conditions. Now, I'm going to see my 90-year-old father for his 90th birthday this weekend, and I am not worried about it because he's been vaccinated. So he's been mm -hmm. vaccinated, boosted, and he had the infection. All of that together has given him good immunity despite his age. Why we worry about older people is usually when they haven't had their um, boosters and be boosted up to date which reminds me, I think it is time for older people to think about a booster while we're even waiting for this new one, because there are so many cases right now, the prevalence is so high, we want older people's immunity to be nicely boosted. Right, okay, so somebody who should get the booster now, when would have their last booster have been? So the thing is, they're saying that we're gonna get the new variant booster in fall. But when we say that, it's the KP311 or the FLIRT variants, I, that's called, it's called that because of these amino acid changes. Um, I don't know when it's gonna come. And I don't know if it's gonna be end of September, October. So for example, my parents being 90 and 82, they had been six months since their last booster. We we're going to have a big party for his 90th birthday. Mm -hmm. Went ahead and got them boosted. So just because the cases are so high. So if you are older, immunocompromised, I would go ahead and get that booster even now. It's going to provide you with protection. Okay. So probably don't go longer than six months if we're seeing it's, a surge like this. Right. Because because we have such a high surge. Exactly. And I'm assuming that we're going to have even more of a surge as we see kids go back to school. Well, the thing about surges is they're often because the variant is more transmissible versus everyone being together. Yes, of course, people have been together. People have been together for two years. As you say, people are tired of COVID. People have not had their whole life go around COVID and people have been hanging out for two years. So yes, there'll be more people together when kids go back to school. But the thing about the reason we've had such a surge is likely because this KP311 variant is so transmissible. We didn't used to see surges of respiratory viruses in the summer. We didn't see influenza in the summer. We saw that in the winter. The reason we see COVID surges so often is because we've had such all these new variants that are more transmissible that lead people to get ill. Okay. Now, moving forward, uh, I'm sure you've heard a lot of talk about the bird flu right now, how that is jumping from uh, factory farms to humans. What are the chances of that turning into the next pandemic that we're dealing with? Is there anything that we learned from the last one um, that we can take into a lesson in preventing this? It's a really good question. So the thing, the reason that we're watching bird flu carefully is Though we've always seen influenza in a lot of animals, and this is in avians, this went to cows. And that's unusual. We see it in pigs, but we haven't seen it in cows before. And so the people who have gotten sick have been dairy cow workers because they're closely exposed to the cows. Now, it is not yet pandemic potential because what takes it into a pandemic form is efficient human-to-human -human transmission. We have not seen that. It's cows to humans. So because of that lack of efficient, we're not there. But what do we need to be prepared for? We have a vaccine. There are two candidate vaccines. And what I'm worried about is that there's some vaccine hesitancy these days. And I hope that we can get over um, that COVID was a hard time. And if we need to have H5N1 be in our yearly influenza vaccine, then I hope people will take it. Okay.
Hopefully it does not turn into that. Dr. Monica Gandhi from UCSF, we appreciate it. And uh, big happy birthday to your dad. I know, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at the height of the pandemic, schools, businesses, and government organizations were offering lots of free COVID tests. And now some of those tests that we've all stockpiled, maybe, I have several in my closet, they're maybe past the expiration date. So can you still use them? You know, these tests really have a longer lifespan than is indicated on the box in which they come. But uh, I'm a little bit worried about how people have stored them. Some of them have gotten very, very hot, for example, and that could reduce their sensitivity. Better to use a test that's not expired in order for you to have confidence in the results. The last thing you want is to have COVID and have the test turn out negative, and then you'll spread it to other people. You don't want that. Good point. Still ahead. A unique look into the life of another Bay Area doctor, how he managed to find love in the time of COVID. Well, during the COVID pandemic, a lot of Bay Area doctors became household names as they helped make sense of that very uncertain time. Our Elizabeth Cook reports, while one of them was helping us navigate the global health crisis, he was also navigating the complete transformation of his own life. Less than 24 hours until one of the biggest days of Peter Chin Hong's life. And needless to say, there are a few butterflies. Both exciting, but a little bit terrifying in a good way like terrifying like you want to go on the roller coaster and the roller coaster is going to go down um, and you know you're going to have fun but it's that anticipation. Dr. Peter Chin Hong is joining us now in our you probably recognize Dr. Peter from the COVID days every night journalists including myself would turn to him for the latest information on the virus. He became a celebrity overnight. It was really important for me to be as calm and measured as possible. But inside, I was on fire and all these explosions going off. It all began a few years before the pandemic at a UCSF medical conference in Reno. And the elevator door opened and there was Sam. And I just totally platonically and spontaneously, you know, I didn't have dinner plans. I was like, you want to get dinner? Dr. Sam Bronfield is an oncologist at UCSF. He and Peter had known each other for years. They were colleagues and friends. But at that moment, something changed. It was just like a truck hit me and I didn't know what happened. And time stood still. But back home, life was complicated. Thanks so much. And as the world grappled with COVID, Peter's life, sexuality, and vision of the future were completely upended. I think about COVID as being scary, um, but to me, moving on to this brave new world uh, was just as scary and uncertain as COVID. So I was living these two different uncertain lives. Peter was also dealing with a barrage of online hate for speaking out about the virus. Because it wasn't only hate about being a medical professional, it was hate about things about me, about my heritage, about being Asian, about going back to China. Dr. Bob Walker is the chief of medicine at UCSF. I think his feeling was this is hard doing this, but I got to do it. It's, I'm, I'm making a contribution. A lot of people are depending on me for information uh, about what's going on and what, how they should live their lives. And so I think it was it was a sacrifice that he was willing to stay out there and be in the public view. Uh, but that's just the kind of person he is. On Saturday, June 20th, 2024, at the Asian Art Museum, escorted by his brother and sister, Peter Chin Hong walked down the aisle to his love, Sam Bronfield. Serenaded by the gay men's chorus, a perfect ending to a love story that didn't have the fairy tale beginning. For me, the pandemic was really the thing that catapulted me to this period of joy and inspiration and finding my true self and opening the door to the rest of my life in a way that I never thought or imagined I would be. But the best love stories, the ones that last, are often the ones that rarely go according to plan.
Stern Grove Festival presents a free concert featuring jazz and funk legend Herbie Hancock and the all-star ensemble, the SF Jazz Collective. Sunday at 2, stream or watch it live on KPIX.com or PIX+. Plus. Thanks for joining us today for our conversation about the COVID surge. We would love to hear what you think about it. Are you taking more precautions? Do you think this is just part of the progression? You can post your thoughts online using the hashtag KPIX. CBS Evening News coming up next, and local news continues on our streaming service, CBS News Bay Area.